The Alabama sturgeon uh, is, is the world's rarest sturgeon species. Um, this is a fish that we've only collected two um, since July of 2000. The way that the sturgeon have, have um, been driven to this point is a myriad of different reasons. Um, environmental impacts, dam impoundments, they really need that free-flowing open water to spawn, um, and so we have dams now that are impeding that. They were harvested for caviar, over-harvested for caviar, and then just quality of the streams has gone down. It's found right here in this river system. There's only place that exists right here in the Alabama River. So it tells us that if it's not here, there's something going on. And it's indicated for other organisms that are disappearing. We have Alabama shad, moon eye that we're concerned about too that are disappearing, that we're not capturing. The goal of this project as a whole is to um, try to locate the Alabama sturgeon. Um, what we're hoping to do is catch enough fish to develop a brood stock. That is, get enough fish at our hatchery that we can spawn them and we can take those eggs and those fry and put them back in the water. Um, the problem we're having is that there's so few out here right now, we're having a hard time locating where we should be sampling. So traditional sampling involves um, like boat shocking, backpack shocking, seining, gill netting, trot lines, and all of those things take a ton of time and a ton of effort, a ton of manpower. So one te technique to help tell us where to go is this new environmental eDNA technique. With environmental DNA, all it takes is one tiny little piece of DNA, one cell from their scales, from urine, from gametes, from feces, slime, all of those things leave a DNA trace. And anything like that, when they slough these off, we're hoping to capture that in the water sample. Just like if you had committed a crime, there would be traces of that. These fish are not committing crimes, but we're looking for them just in the same way. Instead of me spending all summer and spring out here figuring out where I need to be, if I have uh, eDNA detection, I can concentrate you know, in that certain area at that certain time by just grabbing a water sample. We uh, take two liters of water from a site. Once we collect these samples um, in the water, we have to cool them down, we chill them, and then they have to be filtered within 24 hours because the DNA will break down. Then we have a filter, and from that filter, we extract DNA. So we are attempting to get tiny little cells and um, strands of DNA from that filter. We extract that, and then we run it through a process called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. This is um, a thermal cycler, and what it does is it runs the PCR for us, basically. And so it takes the template DNA through a series of t temperature changes, and then it repeats through those three temperature cycles over and over and over again to create new pieces of DNA. So, and then we take it out of this machine and run it out on an agaros gel, and that's where you can actually visualize the DNA. So you cross your fingers and hope that you're gonna see a glowing band in all the right places. Then if we get a positive sample, we send that away to a lab and we do DNA sequencing with that, where it actually tells us the sequence of your nucleotides, so your A, T, Cs, and Gs. And then what we do is blast it against a database and say, does this match anything? And if we have an exact match, then we know um, what the target species is. We have in fact found the Alabama sturgeon through environmental DNA. Um, we've detected it at several locations. Um, what's exciting about this is that it tells us that um, it's not extinct, that it's still living, um, it is still in these water systems. So we're going to continue to sample um, at the same sites that we've been sampling at and Steve will concentrate their efforts in the areas that we've demonstrated that Alabama sturgeon are there. The end goal right now is to hopefully identify where these fish are, capture them, where we can establish um, a hatchery program for them. Because without that, we're gonna lose this species. And a long-term goal would be habitat restoration, potential fish bypass. Um, I do all this because I love science, but also the conservation aspect is really important to me. The higher biodiversity in our ecosystems is, is an, a direct indicator of the quality of our lives. Um, and as species continue to disappear on our planet, our quality of life is going to continue to go down. And it's very important to me to, to keep that, um, that biodiversity high.